Hello and welcome to Chapter 7 of Financial Statement Analysis. In this particular chapter, we're going to focus primarily on cash flow analysis. Some might argue that the statement of cash flow is the most important statement of all the financial statements that an organization uh, puts together because cash is king. You might have heard that expression. What are the, what's the relevance of the statement of cash flows? Well, it really provides information about the most liquid of all assets, which is cash. And if you can review the liquid, look what's going on with the cash, then you can make a determination about the long-term viability of the organization. And it covers, and really cash is the beginning and the ending of the company's operating cycle. It's different, cash is different than accrual-based accounting because accrual-based accounting takes into account when things were earned, not when they were received. And net cash flow is kind of an end measure of profitability. And you'll see that when we look at the at the, the financial statements here in a little bit. It helps us understand both the liquidity, solvency, and financial flexibility of the company. The relevance of cash continued. Statement of cash flows, SCF, helps address questions such as how much cash is generated or used in operations, what expenditures are made, with cash made from operations. In other words, are you investing in something or are you paying off paying off bills? How are dividends paid when confronted with an operating loss? Or do they? Is maybe a more appropriate question there. What is the source of cash for debt payments? Are they getting it from operating? Or are they turning around and are they um, selling stock in order to pay off debt? Are they flip-flopping their, their, their stuff? Um, the next one, how are... How, how is the increase in investments financed? Well, there's a section on the statement of cash flows. So that's the investing section. And if you look at it, what you want to do is determine if the money that the company is investing is coming from operations, from debt, or from equity, or from maybe even from selling another uh, investment in order to buy a new one. So maybe they're selling an old plant asset to buy a new one. Um, what is, what's the source of cash for new plant assets? The same kind of stuff. And why is cash lower when income is increased? Well, it could be lower because the company is growing, for example. And what is the use of for cash received? Now, understand when you do the analysis on the statement of cash flows, what you're going to find is that the numbers aren't exactly one for one. It's going to be some kind of gray areas, and you're not going to say, well, they took out $10 million and they sold $10 million in a bond, or they sold... $10 million in stock and they bought investments for $10 million or they invested in plant equipment for $10 million. You know, that's not what you're going to find out. You're going to find out that that uh, that they're not a one-for-one one when you do the analysis of a statement of cash flows. What are the reporting? Um, they, there's several different things in the reporting of statement of cash flows. The first one is activity. Is uh, There's three categories, operating, financing, and investing. The first one we're going to talk about is operating, and it relates to earning activities for the company, such as if you're a merchandise company, their earning activity would be buying and selling merchandise. If you're, say, a public accounting firm, that's going to be providing auditing services and tax services for a business. So each one of them is different, but the operating section is really a function of how does the business primarily make their money. In investing means what you're going to do with... Um, assets that you're going to use to grow your business. For example, if you looked at Walmart, investing might be buying or building a new store. That would be an investment. And those assets are expected to generate income for the company long term and short term. Financing, by contrast, is actually where they get money. And typically you're going to look at three things in financing. It's going to be borrowing or pay, and then paid in capital, which is going to be either common stock or preferred stock. And also dividends are going to fall into this investing stuff. And that's just broad categories. Those are the things that you're going to see. And depending upon the type of organization, you might also see drawing for a business. If it's a uh, sole proprietorship, you might see drawing where the sole proprietor is taking money out of the business. Um, this is kind of an interesting slide. I want to point this out to you. This is from Dell Computer, and this is in the early 2000s. And you notice what happens if you look on the left side of this slide. The dark numbers are operating cash flow, and the light numbers, the light bars, if you will, are actually net income. And you notice the business made money each year, but their operating cash flow was much higher. That means by buying and selling computers, the company was making money, but they had a positive 
and even a more positive operating cash flow which is fantastic and what that might mean when you look at this is that they didn't really have to build a whole lot of receivables or inventory to support their sales so this is really a fantastic picture right and in in each case the operating cash flow outpaced the net income and now if you look over to the right side you notice the difference here this one's operating these two are investing in financing if you look at this financing it looks like they either borrowed money or sold stock in every year and but it looks like in 2004 they had a huge and they made a huge investment over all the other years 2004 we had 2.8 million and all the other years combined probably don't come up to 2.8 million or very close to it so they had some kind of a huge investment in 2004 but it looks like the huge investment was really driven primarily by operating cash flow if you kind of do a balance of these numbers now like I stated earlier you're not going to know exactly why and exactly where the numbers come from but directionally you should be able to tell for those of you that are pure accounting types you'll that'll drive you nuts do an analysis on the statement of cash flows because you're not going to be able to pinpoint exactly what happened so that'll be a challenge for you but I want you to be aware of that so there's two ways that businesses or organizations and two gap approved ways to look at the statement of cash flows the indirect method and the direct method and nearly all companies in the United States use the indirect method because the indirect method if you if you choose to do the direct method you have to do a good portion or at least the operating section of the indirect method so if you're already going to go down the path of doing the operating section of the indirect method why don't you just finish it and do that as opposed to doing the direct method they both yield the same results but their presentation formats are different we're going to focus primarily in what you're going to see in your financial analysis is that the indirect method is the primary way and you probably the odds are highly unlikely that you're going to see a direct method statement of cash flows with your financial analysis so we're going to focus primarily on the indirect method and what you have is in the indirect method you start off with this is uh, we're looking first at operating activities remember we had three sections operating investing and financing and in the operating section you start off with net income you add back non-cash expenses this depreciation and amortization you subtract out gains on sales of assets because this is a, an accrual gain or loss and you subtract out losses or you add back losses and then you because these are accrual not cash basis and we'll pick up the cash for this in the investing section here in just a little bit and I'll show you that when we get there and you've generated and the difference between your current assets and current liabilities and we'll touch a little bit on what that means there, there's something called a source and a use of cash now they'll use a different term here in a little bit but a source and use of cash is really what you're talking about source is cash in use is cash out so here's what the income statement looks like but what they've done so this is the income statement on the top but what they've done is they've taken these depreciation and amortization expenses and said no we want to add these back in because they are not really cash expenses you remember if you remember from way back when you took maybe a principals one class and you had to do a, um, a, a when you buy a long-lived asset like a property a property plant and equipment that's called a deferral and that deferral means that you're deferring those expenses over a period of time so you can follow so that you can um, do a matching principle or follow something with a matching principle so this is the this is the operating section now here's a real simple example I think it's good to understand this let's say a company had a sale on account of hundred dollars when they had this sale on account for hundred dollars there's no cash flow because they didn't collect it but when they collect it they had positive cash flow of hundred dollars in whatever period they they were they collected it so even though they might add a sale if they have not collected the money then it is not a positive cash flow so this is kind of what I was talking about earlier you notice it says ca assets increase cash outflow that's going to be a use of cash really if you were to look at this because they are tying more money up in say inventory or accounts receivable assets decrease so if you looked at accounts receivable for example if you had a decrease in assets that's going to be a source or an inflow of cash cash coming in likewise liabilities 
an increase of a liability is an inflow. Think of it like uh, taking out a loan, even though we're not talking, if we talk about current stuff, right? And a cash outflow would be when you're paying off a loan. That's going to be the difference because you're reducing the liability and you have to do that with cash. Now here's a, uh, here's a statement of cash flows. I'm not going to go through all this, but this is typically how you would see a statement of cash flows. You're going to compare year over year each balance and you're going to summarize and use them accordingly. The first thing I want to point out to you, and you'll see this in the next slide, is when we do our statement of cash flows, the net change in cash for the year needs to be 24000 and our goal is to break that down into operating, investing, and financing. And if you look here, for example, let's just start with this one. Receivables, 48000 to 39000 It actually went up $9,000. That means the company had $9,000 more tied up in their receivables, so that's going to be a use of cash because they're tying their money up. Conversely, if you go to the next one, even though the sign isn't different, they have absolute values here, I think the sign would be different. You had a reduction in inventory. That means you have less money tied up in inventory, so that's going to be a use of cash. And you can see all those as we, as we go down. The first ones are current, then you have the long term, then you have the current liabilities, and then the long term. Now over here, you're going to start off with the uh, income, and then there's some other notes that really you can't get from the financial statements that help facilitate doing the statement of cash flows. They purchased a truck at cost that was financed in full by the manufacturer. That is a non-cash transaction because no cash pass hands. That one has to be a note. A truck was sold at cost with a net book value of 10000 And it said that um, at a cost of 10000 and a net book value of 2 was sold during the year for 7 So really what they did is they made 5000 on the sale. And you see that right here, this $5,000 gain. And they paid $51,000 in dividends. So this one's going to go in the investing section. This one's going to touch both the operating because we're going to subtract out this gain in the operating because that's non-cash. That's accrual gain. And we're going to add it back in here in the investing section, but we're going to add in the $7,000. So I just want to paint a little bit of a picture before we get to this. And, you know, I could go through all these. You can stop the presentation here and read these. But essentially what you're doing is starting with net income and ending up with a net change in cash. And you're picking up the different things in each category. And you notice cash from financing is long-term liabilities and equity. Ca cash from um, long-term assets is net cash flows from investing. And then you have the operations. So let's take a look just a little bit at this one. Started off with net income of 84000 There's your cash. I mean your non-cash. Here's the loss, the accrual or the gain, the accrual gain that we have to subtract out. And these are all the changes in current assets and current liabilities. So they had a positive cash flow from operations of 113,000. They bought equipment for 70. They they sold equipment for 7. That's the 7 grand that they got. They have 63,000 uh in investments and they paid looks like they paid back a mortgage and they issued stock and then they also had dividends so see here and here's the net change in cash overall 24,000 which we looked at before the beginning cash was 51 the ending is 75 so we had a net change and it says assets costing 30,000 were purchased during the year were financed in whole so here's the note on the financial statements okay now what are some special things we got to look at in the statement of cash flows the investor records as income its percentage interest and in income in the investing company and records dividends received as a, as a reduction in the investment balance. The portion of undistributed not, it, it earnings is non-cash. So if you have, a, if you have a, an equity method accounting deal, the portion of undistributed earnings is non-cash income and needs to come out of the statement of cash flow. So you have to really isolate that very good. And that's going way deep into the financials, just like where they gave you notes about how they sold something. You're going to have to take a look at this and see what happened. Acquisitions of, comp uh, acquisitions of companies with stock. These are non-cash transactions, and therefore they're not going to be showed. Um, changes in the balance sheet accounts reflecting the acquired company will not equal inflows and outflows reported on the statement of cash flow. So that's a special topic. A couple more. Post retirement benefit cost. The excess of net post-retirement benefit expense over cash, is, cash benefits paid must be added to net income in computing net cash flows from operations. 
So that one, you might look at that when you're looking at your stuff. And the securitization of accounts receivable. Basically, you're selling accounts receivable and getting cash back. And, um, and when you sell them, it's actually a reduction in accounts receivable and an increase in the cash flow from operations. So that's what it's going to look like. An analyst should question whether they represent true improvement in operating performance or not. This would not be a true improvement in operating performance typically where they're selling accounts receivable. So that's a really good question. So the direct method, I'm not going to go through a bunch of this as I talked about earlier, but I just want you to be aware that there is a direct method for the statement of cash flows. And you notice here it's kind of ironic. It says preferred by analysts and creditors. But most companies do not do that. And they have to start off with doing the indirect method. That's basically what this says. Um, that the indirect method for the operations before they do the rest of it. So I think for the main reason, from a, a scarce resource perspective, companies have elected not to do the direct method statement of cash flows. What are some of the limitations uh, on the statement of cash flows? Practice does not require separate disclosure of cash, of cash flows pertaining to extraordinary items. So extraordinary items and discontinued operations are all buried in those numbers. So if they're, they're all going to end up being in the operating section, but really they shouldn't be because those numbers are not operating on an ongoing basis. Interest and dividends received and interest paid are classified as operating cash flows. So these are all carried as operating cash flows, but these numbers really are not part of the core business. I like to think of what's in the operating section as part of the core business and what happens. And income taxes are classified as operate, or operating cash flows. I'm not certain I agree with that one either. And the removal of pre-tax and then after-tax gains or losses in the sale of plant or equipments. What, I, mean, I could read this, but basically what it's saying is it distorts. When you're doing this, this particular, this last bucket, it distorts the cash flow on operations and it also distorts the cash flow from investments. So here's, this is kind of an interesting look as well. And you notice in all these cases, the net income for these companies outpaced the operating cash flows. Kind of an interesting thought. Now I'm not quite certain why, but this, that just gives you an idea of the operating cash flows is, is less than the net income. So that means probably these businesses are growing and they're adding more receivables and adding more inventory and it's not offset by the amount of amount of payables that they have. Current, that is, current, both in current. So interpreting the statement of cash flow as a net income. An income statement records revenues when earned and expenses when incurred. That's a cruel basis. But it does not show the timing of the cash flows or outflows. So it becomes hard, but the information is available on the statement of cash flows. And you notice here, cash flow from operations, a broader view of operating activities than is net income because it gives the user, remember these are for users, it gives them a perspective on whether or not the company is going to be able to pay back what they owe. And and even though it's not a, it's a net measure, but a net income or in cash flows from operations is, is limited usefulness. The key information about components of these measures is what's really the most important. You got to look at the detail. Accounting accruals are used for determining net income, rely on uh, estimates or subjectivity. That's every single set of financial statements you look at has subjectivity. It's a matter of how much and is it material. Uh, the CFO, the, uh, the CFO, cash flow from operations can serve as a check on the net income but it's not a substitute and the cash flow from operations exclude elements of revenue and expenses not currently affecting cash. So those are things that are kind of some limitations. When you look at sources and uses, now we're kind of talking about sources and uses. They change something a little bit here, but sources and uses are assets replacements, are asset replacements financed from internal or external funds. In other words, do so they have to go out and use money from oper do they use money from operations, cash flow from operations, or do they have to sell bonds or stocks in order to replace assets? If they're doing, if they're selling stocks and bonds always, that tells you that they're probably diluting the value of all that sort of stuff. What are financing sources of, uh, of uh, expansion and business acquisitions? What can they do to grow? Can they sell more stock? Can they sell more bonds? Can they continue to grow? What are their ratings? Is the company dependent on external financing? Do they do they always have to have external financing? Sometimes something that is not here. Is the company dependent upon selling some of their assets in order to keep it in operation? 
I worked for a company that that's what happened is they were positive in cash flow, but the positive cash flow was all part of the investing section. And what happens is over time you run out of stuff that you can sell in order to keep afloat. Uh, what are the requirements and types of financing? What do they have? And our managerial, our managerial policies such as dividends highly sensitive to cash flows. Good questions. So this is kind of a, a way that they've analyzed the statement of cash flows for Campbell's Soup. Look at their sources of cash. You can see operating cash. These are all their sources. Other. They sold some stuff. They had miscellaneous. They had borrowings. Long and short term borrowings. So this is just a pie chart of their differences between them. And what do they use that cash for? They bought assets. Uh, they had business acquisition. They repaid debt and they paid dividends. So this is kind of a distribution of both. Now you might not be able to get all this stuff or what you're doing in your analysis but I think it's kind of telling. And you notice that what they did is they pretty much uh, almost on a on a basis they used operating cash flows to buy stuff. Uh, if, if you add these two together that's like uh, 48 almost 49 percent. So they're really using operating cash flows to act to acquire new assets and to acquire new businesses. And then the rest is pretty much straightforward. What are some inferences you can make? Where did management commit resources to the company? Where are they? What are they trying to do? What are they trying to do with their company? You know, the, you know, the statement of cash flows is really telling about that. Where additional cash was derived from? Did they get extra cash that they had not had before? And where did it come from? What? Where? Uh, next one. Where claims against the company were reduced? What did they reduce? Did they reduce what they owed? And how do they reduce it? And the size and comp composition and pattern and stability of operating cash flows. That's really going to do it, looking at a trend. So there's some other alternative measures of cash flows. One of those is something called the EBITDA. EBITDA is earnings before interest, taxes, depreciation, and amortization. So it's really taking earnings before interest and taxes, less your two non-cash expenses. It's a real quick and dirty way to understand if the business is generating cash or not. Yeah, because you might these might be really high for a business, but they're still generating cash. What are some of the issues? Um, Long-term depreciable assets is a real asset, a real expense, and it can't be ignored. But we're kind of ignoring it in this case because it's non-cash. The add back of depreciation expense does not generate cash. Absolutely, it does not. So even though it doesn't generate cash, it shows that the cash is higher. And net income for de from depreciation ignores changes in working capital. So you don't know if the company is tying all their money up in accounts receivable or, or accounts payable if they're paying that down. You don't you you miss that. But if you're trying to look at it very quick and dirty and you don't have a lot of time and you're doing a quick evaluation of the business, this is going to give you a pretty good measure about where the business stands. So what else do you got to look at when you're doing analysis of the statement and cash flows? Um, you want to look at the company and economic conditions and uh, why they're different. You also must interpret the changes in working capital items in light of what's happening and what are the things that are happening to the business also with their competitors. You always have to establish the framework. Another measure of uh, cash flows is something called free cash flow. You're looking at cash flow from operations, less net capital expenditures to maintain productive capacity, less dividends gives you free cash flow and that just just in that free cash flow another way to look at it is looking at no pat less the change in net operating assets it's just another way to benchmark what's going on with this business and it positive free cash flow reflects the amount available for business activities after allowances for financing and investing requirements to maintain maintain productive capacity at current levels so what it's really telling you is do they have money to continue to grow their business or is that are they pretty much tapped out and it also tells you about their growth and financial flexibility and what they can do and it allows you to recognize that the amount of capital expenditures needed to maintain productive capacity is not disclosed but this gives you a pretty good idea cash flow validators what are they uh, uh, the statement of cash flow is useful in identifying or misleading operating results or expectations the feasibility cash flow provides us clues on the feasibility of financing capital expenditures. You want to know really if they're coming from operations. Cash sources and financing, 
what if the company is dependent upon external financing, what they might do with dividends. And why do you say that? Because it's trended. You can see it. The ability to pay or meet debt service requirements. If they're having trouble with operating, they might not be able to pay what they owe. And what are some of the financial practices of the business? And this bottom one is so important, quality of earnings. It's not made, you don't really look at it very often, but quality of earnings says, when they report their numbers, are they, inc are they consistent or inconsistent? That's really, really important. Well, that's the end of Chapter 7. I hope you're having a great day, and I'll see you when we get to 